Hello, my name is Kenny Bastani, and I am a community contributor and open source advocate for the Apache Pino open source project. Pino is a real-time distributed OLAP data store built to deliver scalable real-time analytics with low latency. It can ingest from batch data sources such as Hadoop HDFS, Amazon S3, Azure ADLS, Google Cloud Storage, and more, as well as stream data sources such as Apache Kafka. In this video, I'll introduce you to deploying and operating a Pino cluster on Kubernetes. Container technologies like Docker are becoming more and more adopted today to run applications and infrastructure in the cloud. Linux containers have many benefits, but chief among them is resource isolation. Containers can isolate their resources while running side by side on a single virtual machine, and they can be started in seconds as opposed to VMs. In order to manage a multi-container deployment for an Apache Pinot cluster, there are three fundamental problems that need to be solved. First, operations. How will I deploy, manage, and upgrade my Pinot cluster? Next, scalability. How will I scale different components and containers? Finally, we have load balancing. How will I load balance traffic so that there is no single point of failure. The chief solution for these three problems today is the use of a container orchestration platform. Unless you've been hiding underneath a mainframe, you've probably heard of an open source project called Kubernetes. For those that are still new to this popular tool, Kubernetes is a container orchestration platform, or what you could generally refer to as a pass which is a platform as a service. Kubernetes manages the desired state of a distributed system that is defined by a user and helps to scale up their application deployment while also managing things like load balancing for inbound traffic. Kubernetes works with most popular cloud vendors like Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud Platform, Azure, and much more. In Apache Pino 0.3, the community released a distribution of Pino on Kubernetes that is ready for production. In this tutorial, we're going to walk through some of the considerations that the Apache Pino project committers had for implementing Pino on Kubernetes. The Apache Pino team had a few goals in mind for a Kubernetes deployment. First, they wanted to use Kubernetes to manage an Apache Pino cluster. They also wanted to scale Pino at each layer, for example, the Pino controller, broker, and servers, ensuring there would be no single point of failure. Lastly, they wanted to have auto healing and recovery in the case of an application failure. Here's a very high level Pino deployment on Kubernetes. If you take a look at the middle part of this slide, we are basically using a stateful set for all of the Pinot components, as well as Zookeeper. A stateful set is a workflow that the API outputs to manage your stateful applications in Kubernetes. In terms of the container configuration, it provides a very stable and unique map of identifiers, as well as a stateful and persistent storage volume. For the Pinot deployment, it provides an ordered and graceful startup in addition to scaling. We also were able to perform rolling updates as a part of the zero downtime upgrade of the Pinot platform. As you see here, in the middle part of the slide again, we have Pinot Zookeeper as a stateful set. Here we have the Pinot controller, broker, and server all connecting to it. The Pino controller and server will be able to put data on a deep store, as well as streaming data sources. All the while, we are exposing the Pino controller and broker through the load balancer, as seen on the right. The Pino cluster, which is one of three different components in Pino's architecture, will be exposed through the load balancer. 
This will allow clients to administer a Pinot cluster or query data through the web console, which is made available at the host name of your Kubernetes cluster. Next, the Pinot broker will be exposed for data applications that are clients with the requirement to execute queries directly on Pinot using a REST API. These kinds of applications are typically internal or external dashboards, or any client-side application that needs to fetch data from the Pinot cluster. Now let's deploy a Pinot cluster using Helm. We're going to deploy Pinot to Kubernetes using three commands. This first command will try to install Pinot. The parameters provided mean that we will install Pinot with one controller, one broker, and two servers. These configurations are for the simplicity of this demo, but in a production setting, it's important to have more than one of each Pinot component. So now I'm going to set up my Pinot cluster using Helm. The first command I run is to add the Helm repository. And the next step is to create the namespace for Pino. And then finally, we'll go ahead and run the Helm install command. Now that we've deployed Pinot to Kubernetes, let's go ahead and check the cluster state to make sure things are running okay. Great, so now we see that it's running successfully and we can begin to use the cluster. Now let's review the individual components of Pinot. First, we're going to take a look at the Pinot controller. The Pinot controller is responsible for allowing cluster management using a REST API, as well as providing users a simple web-based query console. The Pinot controller deployment will leverage stateful sets in Kubernetes and keep a constant static host name. In the stateful set for the Pinot controller, you can see to the right here that there are two pods, Pinot controller 0 and Pinot controller 1. From the network layer, we're going to have a headless service for the controller. The headless service will manage the unique identities of the pod names for the Pinot controller, as seen again to the right. The load balancer service will expose the Pinot controller as the high level service name and will be used to expose the controller to external traffic. The request will then be load balanced between the available pods for the controller, in this case, Pinot Controller 0 or Pinot Controller 1. For the scaling factor, we'll have a default cluster size of 3 to start. This is the default number for failover consideration. Typically, and for a wide majority of cases, you'll only need three nodes, and not more than that. For example, at LinkedIn, there are over 1,000 Pinot server nodes deployed, yet still only three controller nodes are required. The Pinot controller also has support for a deep store. For example, as seen to the right, this could be HDFS, Google Cloud Storage, Azure Data Lake, Amazon S3, or a network file storage. Pinot supports multiple plugins for these cases. And in the case of Kubernetes, we'll need to create a persistent volume to these storage mediums so that Pinot can directly use them. The persistent volume will need to be configured for the access mode read, write, many. We'll need to mount this persistent volume to all of the Pinot controller nodes. Currently, there is not a lot of support for this situation. The third option is that we can utilize Linux Fuse libraries, and this option is useful for Google Cloud Storage through GCS Fuse, a library that allows you to mount your Google Cloud Storage as a file system. For the instance type, we typically try to balance CPU and memory. For example, you can use EC2 M5.2x large 
which has 8 cores and 32 gigabytes of memory. Now let's review the Pino Broker. Here we use stateful sets to keep the hostname constant just like we did for the Pino controller. We'll also use the same configuration for headless and low balancer services, as we saw earlier with the Pino controller. The scaling factor here is based on the expected query load. We typically start with two to three nodes, and based on your query load, you can add additional nodes as needed. For instance types, we'll use the same recommendation here as we saw in the Pino controller, balancing CPU and memory. Here you can use an EC2 M5.xlarge with four cores and 16 gigabytes of memory and keep adding more as your query load increases. Next, we have the Pino server. For the Pino server, things get a bit more complicated depending on the size of your expected data. Typically, we use persistent volumes and always recommend SSD for that persistent volume. You can easily do it with remote versus local. And if you're using AWS EC2, you can use the Elastic Block Storage Service to mount a very large volume. For instance type, we recommend choosing VMs with high system memory. That's all for this tutorial. If you're interested in learning more about Apache Pino, head over to our documentation on our website for guides on getting started. Thanks for watching.